Hey guys, Winston for Carbide3D here. Polycarbonate is a super useful material and a great candidate for CNC machining. It's tough, impact resistant, available in clear varieties, and really bad to cut with a laser because it releases some pretty nasty fumes when burned. That makes milling an ideal solution if you're looking to make custom polycarbonate parts. Before we dive into the cutting parameters though, I want to point out that our testing methodology has changed somewhat. We're grouping 2D toolpaths together now. Contour and pocket operations are going to share the same feed rate and depth of cut. That simplification is because we're in the middle of fundamentally overhauling the speeds and feeds data in Carbide Create. As we test out new tools and materials, they'll be integrated into the built-in database. If you're running build 449 or later, you already have access to the polycarbonate speeds and feeds library. For those of you not using Carbide Create though, or if you're just curious about our starting parameters for polycarbonate, here are some machining examples on the Nomad. For 8th inch 2 flute end mills like our 102 flat end mill, I would start 2D operations like contouring and pocketing at 10,000 RPM, 45 inches per minute, and a depth of cut of 0.02 inches. Unless otherwise specified, a step over of 50% is assumed for pocketing operations. And for all tool pads in this video, I'm maxing out the Nomad at 10,000 RPM. If you want to go off menu and do some adaptive roughing infusion, I would try 80 inches per minute, a 0.1 inch depth of cut, and a 0.012 inch optimal load. For a 16th inch 2 flute end mill doing basic 2D operations, try 40 inches per minute and a depth of cut of 0.01 inches. Adaptive toolpads, 60 inches per minute, a 0.075 inch depth of cut, and a 0.01 inch optimal load. For quarter inch three flute end mills like our 201, in 2D toolpads try 90 inches per minute and a step down of 0.012 inches. Because of the limited power of the Nomad and the fact that the edge velocity of a quarter inch end mill is twice that of an eighth inch, I would rather trade depth of cut for speed. That keeps the chips nice and thick and reduces the risk of softening or melting the polycarbonate. For an adaptive toolpath with a quarter inch end mill, try 90 inches per minute, a 0.075 inch depth of cut, and a 0.01 inch optimal load. Is there room to go faster? Yes, but as usual, finding the upper bounds of the machine is an exercise left to the user. For those of you who are curious about our single flute cutters like the 274, 278, and 282 we carry, I had good luck running them about 25% deeper, but also about 25% slower than their nearest multi-flute counterpart. So for example, the 274Z 8th inch single flute ran fine at 30 inches per minute and a depth of cut of 0.025 inches. This rule of thumb should also carry across to acrylic, which I've been using very similar parameters in. One final application note for polycarbonate is that if you're pocketing, I found that conventional cutting can produce these little chip caterpillars that may get wound up around your cutter. If you're using a program where you can choose between climb and conventional cutting, in this case you should opt for climb cutting. I hope this data helps give you a head start in polycarbonate, good luck and have fun machining folks.